Hi, this is Jason Holland, and in this video, I'm going to be telling you why I moved to Mexico. Now, if you like our international living videos, please hit like below and subscribe to this channel. You should also hit the bell icon so you can get video updates. And be sure to comment if you have any questions for us. Thank you. Hi, Jason Holland here, the roving Latin America editor for International Living. Um, now, in my role at International Living, I do get to travel all over the Caribbean, Central, and South America, which is a lot of fun. Uh, but, of course, I am based in Mexico, San Miguel de Allende, Mexico, to be exact, which is a colonial city of about 140,000 people in the mountains of Central Mexico. Uh, we're about four hours north of Mexico City. Uh, previous to being here, and I've been here since 2017, uh, my family and I lived in the Riviera Maya in a small seaside town called Acumal. Perhaps you've heard of it. We were about midway between Playa del Carmen to the north and the beach town of Tulum to the south. Now, the Riviera Maya, of course, is known for its white sand beaches and clear turquoise Caribbean waters. This is Mexico's Caribbean coast. Okay, so... Going back to the beginning, why did I and my family, why did we choose Mexico as a place to live? Well, I can speak for myself and I think uh, many of my fellow expats here in Mexico have uh, a lot of the same reasons uh, for moving to and living in Mexico and why we consider it to be such a special place. Now, let me say first that there are about a million expats from the US and about half a million Canadians living in Mexico full-time or part-time, so it is a very popular place. Now, one of the uh, main determining factors for us was that Mexico is a pretty large country. It's about the size, uh, three times the size of Texas. Um, and within that territory, you have a tremendous variety of landscapes, lifestyles, and climates. You know, for example, I mentioned the Riviera Maya. This is Mexico's Caribbean coast. You have white sand beaches, palm trees, clear blue Caribbean waters. It's that ultimate beach lifestyle. Now, a little bit hot and humid for some people, um, but it is that fun beach vacation kind of lifestyle, and a lot of people enjoy that. Now, here in San Miguel and in other towns and cities in the colonial highlands of Mexico, you have kind of a totally different uh, ball game. We're at an elevation of about 6,200 feet in San Miguel, other highland cities are at about 5,000, 6,000 feet, somewhere around there. So what we get is a nice temperate climate where it's really never too hot, never too cold most of the year. Although we do get some cold uh, nights in winter and some hot days in summer. But for the most part, it's uh, go out during the day in a t-shirt and you'll be very comfortable. Maybe put on a light sweater or a light jacket in the cooler evening hours. So we really enjoy the climate. And then you go over to the Pacific coast, uh, places like Puerto Vallarta, Zehuatanejo, Puerto Escondido, Hualtulco. You are gonna have a warm and humid climate pretty much year round. Although in the winter months, it does get a bit cooler and the high temperatures are tempered somewhat by the sea breezes. Head over to Baja California. In the Southern portion, you have a very dry, arid desert climate uh, where it can get quite warm. Um, and then you head to northern Baja in places like Ensenada and Rosarito, uh, beach areas very close to the U.S. border, and you have a very southern California-like climate, temperate year-round, uh, never too hot, never too cold. So, um, you know, and you have mountains, you have rainforests, you have ancient ruins, you have colonial cities, you have massive modern cities, uh, you have small towns and villages, you have vast agricultural areas, you know, you have these tropical beaches. You know, we love that variety of landscape in Mexico as well and the lifestyles that go along with it. Now another big benefit to living in Mexico is the lower cost of living. Uh, you can get by here on much less money uh, than you would in the United States and we enjoy having a much bigger house for our money. We enjoy having great meals out and not paying about half to maybe a third of what we'd pay for a similar meal in the United States. Um, so that makes date nights uh, very doable in Mexico. Um, we also enjoy the rich culture in Mexico. Mexico's heritage stretches back thousands of years uh, with the indigenous peoples uh, that live throughout Mexico and there are dozens of indigenous groups throughout the country that exist to this day. 
so those traditions from these indigenous people thousands and hundreds of years ago, festivals, holidays, uh, celebrations, you know, other aspects of the culture, uh, they're still very much um, practiced today in Mexico. And of course, after the Spanish came and colonized Mexico, um, after the New World was uh, quote unquote discovered, so to speak, um, they kind of blended uh, that European Spanish culture with the indigenous traditions, uh, as well as Roman Catholicism with indigenous religions. So you have this great mashup of cultures and traditions in Mexico with holidays like Day of the Dead, which actually is an outgrowth of a indigenous celebration and of um, celebrating your ancestors, your deceased loved ones, um, bringing them back from the afterlife uh, to our, our world today and uh, kind of being able to visit with them for at least one day a year. And it kind of blended with uh, Catholicism uh, that holiday. So Day of the Dead is now one of Mexico's biggest holidays. Now we also like that Mexico having these millennia old, these hundreds of year old traditions, it's still very much a modern country and it's first world in many ways. The infrastructure is good. The nationwide highway system is good. There are international airports throughout the country that offer flights around the world, especially to the United States and Canada, because there are so many tourists that come uh, from those countries. So you have multiple ways of getting back and forth uh, from your home country. You can even drive to Mexico because it is so close, of course, which is what my family and I do. We've driven all over Mexico, driven back and forth to the United States uh, many times. Now, in other ways, Mexico is also very modern with its um, high-speed internet. We have great uh, 3G and 4G cell phone service throughout the country. You will notice that uh, when you come to Mexico, you're going to find stores and brands that you have in the United States and Canada. Things like Office Depot, Home Depot, Walmart, Costco, Sam's Club. You know, all that good stuff you're going to find in Mexico. And when you go in the stores, you're also going to find plenty of brands from the United States and Canada as well. So it makes the transition a bit easier, you know, when it comes to Mexico. But of course, that rich Mexican culture shines through in everyday life from celebrations. Oh, must be somebody in my front door. Those are my dogs barking there. Um, so you have these celebrations, you have that rich Mexican culture, the, the festivals and the parades and the markets. Um, so even though you do have that modern aspect of being able to shop at a big box store, you still can go to the weekly market, the weekly farmer's market and get all the vegetables you need uh, for the week for, you know, a couple bucks. Uh, so that's another aspect that we like is that that blending of the traditional culture and the modern uh, conveniences as well. Now, I did mention that it is close to the US. So one thing that uh, many people may not consider is that you can drive to Mexico, which is what my family and I do. So instead of um, you know getting a flight to Mexico, you can actually drive your car. And if you're a tourist, or if you are a temporary resident, um, and if you go to the link in the description, you can find information all about residency and visas and uh, all other aspects of living in Mexico. You can actually drive your car in, which makes it tremendously convenient. You don't have to buy one locally. Um, you can just bring your car in and it stays in Mexico legally for the length of your visa. Okay, so that's Mexico. Um, you know, one thing uh, that somebody did bring up is the language barrier. Um, and I'll address that concern real quick. Um, of course, they speak Spanish in Mexico. Uh, but here's the thing, especially in areas visited by tourists and areas where there are a lot of expats and there are numerous areas like that in Mexico, you can get by pretty much in English because so many locals do speak English uh, because of tourism, because they work in that industry or because they're in a town where there are so many expats that a lot of the local people have picked up at least some English. So you can communicate just fine without speaking much Spanish. Of course, you do want to learn some Spanish because it's the polite thing to do. Um, it's a great way to get to know your neighbors, to make new friends, to kind of go know what's going on around you in your community, to be able to read the newspaper, watch the news in Spanish, and get to know what's going on in your town, uh, the surrounding region, and even throughout the country. Um, so learning a bit of Spanish is a good thing to do. Um, people really appreciate it. And you don't have to become fluent. Um, you probably won't. Um, but if you learn some key words and phrases, you are uh, well equipped to navigate life in Mexico. 
And another thing that, that people bring up with me a lot, um, and especially people, uh, acquaintances and friends and family members, uh, this is what they brought up when they found out I was moving to Mexico. They're worried about safety because you uh, watch the news in the US, um, they, when they talk about Mexico, they're a lot of times gonna be talking about violence, about drug cartels and things like that. And uh, of course, those things are happening uh, in Mexico, um, in different areas throughout the country. Um, but as I mentioned, there are about a million US expats in Mexico, half a million Canadians, millions of tourists come every year uh, to Mexico. The vast majority of people experience no issues. Um, and most of the cartel violence and things like that is between the cartels or between the cartels and the government and the expats, the foreigners in the country are not involved. Um, so you don't really have to worry about that too much. I mean, of course, my family and I, we are uh, concerned about those things. We keep an eye on the news. We keep an eye on areas that are kind of no go zones because of safety issues. Uh, but for the most part, we don't aren't concerned too much about violent crime, uh, being victims of violent crime. I always tell people that I wouldn't live in Mexico if I, if I didn't feel safe. I wouldn't have my kids here um, in Mexico if I, if I felt that they were in danger in any way. So um, that's Mexico kind of in a nutshell. And uh, I was only able to touch on you know, a few things here, uh, but I would encourage you to go to the link in the description um, so you can kind of learn all about Mexico, explore the internationalliving.com website. Uh, because we have hundreds of articles about Mexico, about the climate, about different areas to go, how to get a residence visa, how to get your stuff to Mexico, the cost of living, uh, lots of examples, lots of stories of happy expats who live in Mexico, a lot of practical information too. So that's why I moved to Mexico. Thank you so much uh, for sharing this time with me and I uh, hope to see you in Mexico very soon, as soon as this whole pandemic craziness um, is over. Hopefully uh, you'll be able to take a trip to Mexico. So thank you very much and uh, have a great day. This is Jason Holland, the IL Roving Latin America editor, signing off. Thank you very much.